Hello and welcome to this clip on water crystallisation. It's one of those topics that comes under mole calculations, but you don't actually come across many exam questions that are about water crystallisation. Because of that, and because of the fact it doesn't come up in very many past papers, when it does come up, people often get confused by it. So let's start by putting in some definitions that you need to know. When the definitions come up, what I suggest you do is pause the video, go away and make a flashcard for each definition, and memorize the flashcard so that when you play the rest of the video, I'll be assuming that you know what I mean when I'm making reference to these terms. Mm -hmm. So the first one to do a flashcard for is water of crystallization. Now the actual definition, as such, is uh, covered by the first part of what I've written here. But I've added a little bit of extra just to explain what that actually means. So just to clarify what it might look like in real life, uh, that's how copper sulphate, the hydrated version of copper sulphate, might look. So the 5 would be X, obviously, and that would mean that for every one copper sulfate unit in the crystal lattice, you'd have five molecules of water of crystallization. So therefore, we have a one to five ratio. So these are the other two definitions that you need to know, what a hydrated salt is and what an anhydrous salt is. So to try and illustrate this, um, what I'm going to do is show you a couple of photographs of uh, copper sulfate, which we've just looked at, so you can see what it looks like when it's hydrated and also what it looks like when it's anhydrous. So what tends to happen is when you get a hydrated salt, the presence of the water molecules allow the crystals to form a specific three-dimensional structure. And if the water of crystallization is removed, usually by heating, so it's driven off as steam, the same uh, compound actually forms a powder which is a little bit more unstructured and has relatively little geometry in three dimensions by comparison with its hydrated counterpart. Okay, so let's have a little look at some of the practical work you might have come across to do with water crystallization. So this is the apparatus that's generally used to allow the um, determination of how much water crystallization you actually have. So it's a fairly simple procedure that we use, using this type of apparatus. And that allows us to generate some data that we can record in this way. So the mass lost will be your water of crystallization. OK, so let's go through a calculation that we could follow this up with to try and actually work out the value of x. So here's a typical exam question, um, and I'm going to do a little worked um, solution to it at the right, right at the bottom of the screen. So what you've got to think about is trying to get to the situation like this, where your hydrate, sorry, your anhydrous salt is one, and the number of moles of water is x. So it's a racial type calculation. So what I suggest is laying out your calculation like that. And on the top, put your salt and water separately. And along the sides, have mass, then moles, then your mole ratio, giving you your empirical formula. So let's take the information out of the question and pop it into that table. So our two masses from the question have been extracted. And the mass of water, by difference, has been calculated. So using mass over MR, we can get a ratio of 0.16 to 0.8. Now, the thing about that is it's, they're not whole numbers. You can't get 0.8 of a water molecule. So you divide by the smallest, which gives us 1 to 5. So therefore, we can put down the empirical formula as CuSO4 dot 5H2O. Okay, so let's have a look at another one or two worked examples. 
So this one's a little bit more open-ended, isn't it, looking at it. Uh, they haven't given you any data, but they've given you percentage by mass for water, which we can now calculate. So obviously, if it's 62.9% of water by mass, the remainder is going to be your Na2CO3. So to try and generate mass to work with, make it easy on yourself. Assume that if you're not given the mass, that you're working with one mole. Which, you, which allows you to think like this. Okay, so now we can also put the MR of Na2CO3 down. So now what we can start to do is try and work out mathematically what the mass of X or the mass of water might be. So what you can do is assume that your XH2O, treat that in your mind as a separate quantity, as a separate substance almost, a separate thing, and you can work out its, its um, quote-unquote MR. So what you do with this is a little bit of mathematical manipulation. So you're doing a scaling factor, really, aren't you? You're converting the 37.1% by working it through 106 and then scaling it up to work out what the equivalent mass of water would be. So that means that we have 179.9 grams of water. Knowing that the MR of water is 18, we can do moles equals mass over MR. So this gives us X as 10. So they might ask you about the uh, water of crystallization that way in exam two. Okay, hopefully this short clip has been a fairly useful introduction to the idea of water of crystallization and how to think your way through it. Um, obviously, if you have any queries, go to a subject extension or contact your teacher. But in the meantime, thank you for listening and uh, all the best.